It's now the lifeblood of many an office and a key export for one of the world's last communist states, Cuba. The country has paid dearly over the years for its political stand. The US has a 44-year trade embargo on Cuba. In fact, I don't even think US citizens can fly into Cuba from the US. And Russia's withdrawal of financial support in the 1990s have crippled Cuba's economy. Recently, dictator Fidel Castro relinquished power to his wonderfully named brother Raul after becoming too ill to rule. Nobody's sure what this means for Cuba's trade future, least of all two gung-ho businessmen from Wellington who are New Zealand's biggest importers from Cuba. So reporter Ingrid Leary took her handy cam to Havana. In Cuba, time still seems to have stopped somewhere last century even though for the first time in 47 years, someone else is in charge. For now, very little appears to have changed. The Cubans are still playing their famous Caribbean songs and drinking their famous Caribbean coffee. Nine thousand kilometers away in Wellington, New Zealanders have been enjoying the same famous brew made from the same beans for the last eight years. It's been a few years since I've touched any coffee myself. My back's not like it used to be. All thanks to the efforts of two enterprising Kiwis. Coffee Baron Jeff Marsland is famous around Wellington for being as driven and flamboyant as Fidel Castro himself. Where's the coffee? Where's the Cuban? Give me the Cuban! When Marsland started trading with Cuba, Castro was still in his prime, giving marathon speeches at the Revolution Square. His longest lasted 14 hours. I haven't met him in the... In the in the flesh, but I feel like I've um, been doing business with him for nearly 10 years. I took my uh, three children to his office, but he was off in Venezuela kind of doing an oil deal with Hugo Chavez, so he had more important things to do, yeah. Tim Rose is Marsland's business partner. The pair have owned six cafes in Wellington, all shrines dedicated to Fidel Castro. Oh, it's been a long road from, from, from making coffee in the middle of the night to roasting coffee to travelling on planes into the jungle looking for coffee. The search for the perfect bean. They've sold the cafes but continue to import coffee. And they've hung on to a Cuban-themed bar adjoined to the coffee factory, which is close to, but not quite as risque, as the Havana nightlife. Their company, Havana Coffee Works, imports up to three containers of coffee per year from Cuba, that's 20% of Wellington's total cafe coffee bean consumption. They supply 150 cafes around New Zealand and air freight Cuban coffee to China every week. But they've chosen an unconventional path to capitalist success. Cuba remains one of the last communist countries stuck firmly behind the Iron Curtain. The pair have been told they're blacklisted in the United States for flouting the US trade embargo. We've been classified by the uh, Australian banks as trading with the enemy because we trade funds into South America and I'm not worried about not being able to go to America at all. I've been to Disneyland. But you're on a blacklist and we discover that the Cubans are not the most um, open people in the world. Why on earth would you trade with them? You can't get coffee like it anywhere else. In the 20 years I've been dealing with coffee, I think coffee's like the land that it's from. And Cuba's full of magic and music and salsa and beauty and rum and cigars and beautiful coffee. When we arrived in Cuba, we had everything confiscated. We were met by the government that whisked us away to some sort of pretty stern offices. You kind of go into a little reception area and there's two women behind the desk there and they've got the fans going and they're both stony-faced and we thought, you know, shit, what are we doing? We waited about 20 minutes and finally somebody came down and took us up in the lift. We explained why we were there. We ended up meeting the head of Cuba Export in the boardroom. Uh, it's an amazing boardroom, all marble with a big f uh, picture of... Che Guevara on the wall and uh, we said we wanted to buy Cuban coffee and they were surprised about how young we were and they thought what do these boys from New Zealand want with Cuban coffee? When I went there I thought I'd found heaven. Just to go out there and work with the people and go into the grading rooms and wherever we go they, when we arrive they've, all the people come off the crops and, they, and 
we have a big tasting session, we drink coffee and then they do they play music for us and we hang out normally for an afternoon with all the people that, that we work with that pick our coffee, that grade our coffee, that pack our coffee and we show them photos of New Zealand and we give them gifts and we show them what we're doing with the coffee and we show them the packaging and how Cuban people how the New Zealand people love the Cuban coffee. Beyond the romantic view of Cuba, there's no ignoring the fact that it is a dictatorship. Cubans who have unauthorised contact with foreigners can end up in prison. The government can see how enticing tourist dollars are to locals, who officially earn less than $20 per month. It's not so bad for tourists, of course, but foreign journalists are still not really welcome. I had my laptop seized at the airport and all our filmings had to be done pretty discreetly. With the recent handover of power, security is tighter than ever. Does it worry you? Yeah, it does worry me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've got a really nice relationship with the Cubans and, you know, I'm quite, you know, I really enjoy that and quite proud of the fact that we are dealing with them in this kind of period of time. I think it's time that was changing Cuba. I think, I think he has held on too long. That there's a lot of sort of desperate people there now. For Cubans themselves, it is a big unspoken question. Some people say nothing will change. Others anticipate armed conflict. At the moment, the only war being waged in Cuba is against the deadly dengue mosquitoes. And for Cubans, they'll be hoping it stays that way long after Castro's reign passes. Ingrid Leary reporting. Not only was she reporting, she shot a lot of that herself. It was beautifully edited upstairs by Toby Longbottom.